I'll say it one more time. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for being here uh, this morning. Before I get started, I want to introduce two people that are very special to me and important in my life, and that's uh, my young bride of 31 years, Paula, Thank you. and my son, my son of 18 years, Daniel. Daniel is a senior at Aiken High School, and fortunately today is a teacher work day. So he's not missing class. He's here uh, legally, and everything is, is fine with, with that. Uh, our other son, Matthew, or Matt, as many of you know him, uh, is not here, couldn't be with us this morning. He is uh, working hard doing his thing for Congressman Wilson in uh, D.C. So uh, I know he's thinking about us. I just got a text five minutes ago, said good luck, and um, we'll be anxious to talk with Matthew after all this is, is done. Now, the moment uh, we've all been, well, at least some of us have been waiting for. <laughs> Today, I'm honored, proud, humbled, grateful, and a little bit nervous to publicly announce my candidacy for the Republican nomination for House District 81. Thank you. Thank you so much. I know many of you, when you first heard the news a few days ago or maybe a few weeks ago as the rumor was circulating throughout Aiken, you probably thought, really? Why? Even members of my own extended family had a similar reaction. Well, the short and not so politically correct response to that is, I'm running because Don Wells is not. I've always thought that this point would occur sometime in my life. I've always been interested in making a run for public office, but I didn't know if the timing would work out for me. And uh, when Don made his announcement, even though it wasn't part of my plan for 2016, when he made his announcement, I felt like now was the time. The timing was perfect. Our last uh, child, Daniel, is on his way off to uh, Carolina in Columbia in the fall. So uh, we're empty nesters. <laughs> got the time, got the motivation, and uh, this is something I definitely want to do. I think it's important, now that the job is open, that we hire someone with the education, the work experience, the temperament, the passion, the energy, the knowledge, and the desire to go to Columbia and do good work for the people of District 81 and the state of South Carolina. I believe that person, I sincerely believe that person is me. I believe we need someone who will bring a conservative, business-like approach to the problem solving with an emphasis on efficient state government fiscal responsibility, rebuilding our infrastructure, lowering our state's personal and corporate income tax, cutting harmful regulation, advocating for small business, and in every instance, supporting local and state law enforcement. I thought it was important to make my announcement this morning here in order to emphasize my small business background, to share this event with employees who have made all this possible, and to give many of you who have never been here before the opportunity to see what small business means to me. Folks, this is small business. 17,000 square feet, 22 employees, 32 years of continuous operation, dozens of loyal customers, and an endless barrage of daily challenges and opportunities. I joined b &S at the end of 1998, over 17 years ago. The original S in b &S wanted to retire he had long since parted ways with the original B, and that's when I and a couple of partners in Greenville got involved. The business was purchased just before New Year's on, in 1998, and I took control on the first day back to work in January of 1999. I'd never run a business like this before. The learning curve was steep, but I've always been a rather quick study. And thinking back on those early years, I'll never forget a meeting I had with an old and somewhat obnoxious uh, steel salesman who came knocking on the door and he asked with rather the total bewilderment, I'd, I'd say, on his face, um, why would anyone buy a machine shop? And although I hadn't been asked that question before, or at least not quite that directly, my answer was immediate and I told him I bought, I didn't buy a machine shop, I bought a lifestyle. You see, after graduating from the College of Charleston, I spent six years flying around the world with the U.S. Air Force, a great and rewarding experience, 
but I was gone for most major holidays, most every family event, and was on nuclear alert for the first three Christmases that Paula and I were married. And then after a couple of years post Air Force working for a defense contractor, I spent the next six years in a business startup mode trying to bring a new and innovative hospital bed to market, working six to seven days a week, thinking about this product 24-7, and another great experience, but not quite the right lifestyle. So after all that, I was ready for this. This was an opportunity to be home every night, an opportunity to be a Cub Scout leader, t-ball, baseball, and soccer coach, and an opportunity to be there every step of the way to see my two boys grow into fine young men they are today. It hasn't been easy. Small business is tough. It can be scary, exhausting, and when it doesn't go well, as is so frequently the case for some folks, heartbreaking. As an owner of a business like this, you're on call 24-7, and when the phone rings at 2 a.m., it could be a customer, the security folks advising you that the alarm has tripped and the police are on their way, or even a distraught employee. But I and the organization have survived and thrived, and I've learned a lot along the way about what works and what doesn't, about how decisions made in Columbia and Washington can impede business growth, frustrate, and discourage a business owner and crush an entrepreneur before he or she even gets started. I want to take that knowledge and experience to Columbia to fix our roads, improve our educational system, balance our books, make wise and thoughtful decisions with your money, and create a business-friendly environment that will enable our region and our state to compete and win the next Bridgestone, BMW, Volvo, or Boeing and the jobs that they bring with them. Because folks, it's all about the jobs. And to fill those jobs, we need a workforce with the necessary education and training. Our secondary school and technical college systems need to focus on preparing our young people for the high-skilled technical jobs of today's economy. We can do a lot right, but if we don't have a vibrant, growing economy, that creates high quality jobs and a workforce trained for those jobs, we won't be successful. And I won't be successful in this campaign without a lot of help. If you've never really looked into the process as I have just recently, you can't imagine how much time, work, people, and money a campaign for the State House requires. It's truly amazing and at times a bit daunting. So this morning, I ask for your help. I ask first for your vote. And I must ask, because the experts tell me it's necessary, for whatever time, energy, and money you may be able to contribute. I also ask that you remind your friends and neighbors that there's a primary on June 14th, and that they should take a look at the candidates, visit a website, or attend an event. And if it's a website they go to, make sure to tell them about www.bartblackwell.com and tell them to show up and vote. I hope that vote is for me. I want to thank you again for attending this morning. I hope you'll take a few more minutes out of your day to walk through the shop, get a feel for BNS machine tool. We have some machines running. Others are idle due to safety concerns, and we've suspended all welding operations uh, this morning, so no worries about the eyes. Um, if this, at this point, if uh, the BNS associates would return to their workstations and get uh, ready, and you folks just sit tight for a few minutes, um, we'll get uh, let you get out there and, and take a, a walk around. But that's uh, that's the end of my remarks this morning. Thank you.